good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you might be listening to us, you have landed on the Guam by Podcast. Guam by Podcast is sponsored by the Dildo Brewing Company, found in beautiful downtown Dildo, home of the Dildo Sign, sister city to Los Angeles, California. They even have this honorary mayor, Jimmy Kimmel, who I heard mention. Uh, dildo the other night on his show again actually uh, someone in the audience wearing a shirt a dildo shirt and he pointed out in his monologue he said i don't think i don't see your dildo shirt over there and the sweetest thing you can get right now is the new uh new thing they've released which is cider snuggle up the cider it's called snuggle up be cider and uh it's a great thing so you should check that out i'm kevin uh i'm uh, here in london ontario i'm the preacher and i'm here today joined all the way back in newfoundland my brother that would be your other brother, Daryl. I'm Sam. here in beautiful downtown Whiteway. Any signs in the hillsides yet? <laughs> <laughs> no signs in Whiteway. No. But uh, we don't need a sign. We've got Shag Rock. That's right. You have the biggest sign of all. If you drive up and down the shore, it's iconic. Yeah, what do you got no, going uh, for me today? Hockey season's around the corner, right? Woohoo! Yes, it is. Getting excited. So I'm going to try you on some NHL trivia. Oh, I feel like there's a feeling like a deja vu. Didn't I do this? You did Newfoundland professional hockey trivia. Hockey trivia. Okay. So this, so this one's is going to be, this is going to be Newfoundland, Newfoundlanders in the NHL trivia. And we got a good guest coming up today too. Indeed we do. Yeah. You know, the fellow, do you? I heard a little bit about him. You heard him out. I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to call him Mike Lynch or if I'm supposed to call him uh, Cecil O'Brien. <laughs> Cecil O'Brien. Uh, absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Great guy. Perfect. He's going to be coming at us from Alberta. And I, I, I just, I just came in tonight. I, I, um, I dug some potatoes this afternoon. Seems it like it's size. a Cecil O'Brien thing to do. Yeah, well, yeah. They were some size. Daryl sent me a picture. They was hoges. They were like the ones that Buddy spoke about on the Smoke Ramon Kyle. A pig would drown in its eye. About the same size. Yeah. About the same size. All right. So for me to get onto this NHL hockey thing. I can't go into something like this without stretching. God knows anything I do, I'll pull a muscle. So how yeah, do you warm me up on this? You've pulled a few when you've tried to play hockey, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Broke a tailbone, got a concussion. <laughs> so. Hockey, you, you, you need to stay on the firmly on the spectator side. Terra firma. Yeah, so I, I'm going to go back to our, our little stretch. It's going to be this uh, where I ask you about a Newfoundland town, and you tell me what oh, yes. part of Newfoundland they, that it exists in. Yeah. So in honor of our theme of NHL hockey, okay. the name of the town today, you, you may have heard tell of this place, is Tilt Cove. Tilt Cove. Do you get the tie-in with the hockey, Tilt Cove? Tilt Cove? Tilt, fight, the tilt, no? Oh, geez, that's a pretty weak pun there. Okay. <laughs> so I'll no, give it to you. All right. Good. Good. Somebody... Can't be funny. You got to be punny, right? Tilt Cove. So what's my hint? Jeez, I don't know if I got a hint for you. Um, it was a mining town. Okay. Tilt Cove was a mining town, not any longer, so I can guess not much left there. Resettled or no? No, uh, no, still a town. Okay, I'll say Bonavista Bay. Uh, Got to go a little further west. It is in Notre Dame North Bay. Notre Dame Bay, yeah. Uh, kind of the home, Bayford Peninsula, kind of the home of, uh, yeah. of mining and minerals and that sort of thing. Up near Pollard's Point and Sops Arm and all that area or what? Uh, before you get to that, uh, okay. uh, up... Uh, Closer to Shoe Cove, that area, I believe. Mm. We were there last summer. Got a chance oh, yeah. to visit. Was interested in going out. Uh, the town itself uh, was founded in 1813. So it's an old town. Ooh, that is old, yep. But here's the, here's the thing. The population of the town in 2021 was said to have been five people. What? <laughs> five people. <laughs> five and, and people. I, and to be honest, Kevin, I think it's actually four. <laughs> and... Uh, well, everybody's related and they're all on the town council. It's, it's, it's known as the smallest municipality in Canada. And it I says hope, so on their sign, I think. I hope, I, I thought you were going to say Newfoundland. I said, I, I think it's probably Canada. Four people. So it was wow. a, but they had a big mine there, a huge mine at one time. And in fact, the population of the town at one point was uh, over 1,300 people lived there. Wow. And now it's down to five or four. Wow. <laughs> I think it's now, closer. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's quite the spot, and I, in fact, I would recommend if you ever go to that part of the province, it is worth the extra little drive uh, just to, to see it. Yeah. See it. It's uh, wow. It's a, it's a little gem, to be honest with you. Wicked. That that that'd be something. We're gonna have to ask Mike when he comes on if he's done a show in Tilt Cove. He's he's, he's been everywhere. It seems like this past uh, tour he's on. He's all over Newfoundland. Oh, he's right? all over all over Canada. The, the, the Boy, list he's, times. <laughs> he's been to Tilt Cove. That tour has reached Tilt Cove. I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you. We're going to have to find out. 
All right, so uh, let's see what's going on with the Newfoundlanders in the NHL. First question. Yeah. This one will be multiple choice because there's no way you'd know this. Uh, you know, it's a bit of an no. abstract number. That would be how many Newfoundland Labrador-born players have played at least one game in the NHL. Mm. And uh, your choices are 12, 19, 27, or 31. Mm. 27. Close. It's 31. 30, 31. Mm. Might be a bit surprised by that, would you? I would was, you yeah, but I, I, I would have – actually, my gut was to say 19 or something, and I thought, nah, every time I say a low number, it's a high number. So I thought, well, I'll go split the difference. 27, yeah. 31. Yeah, there's no, there's no pattern to my multiple choice. So no, don't. no, clearly not. I'm trying to – I'm reading too much into it, you know. Reading too much into it. Don't. Don't go with C all the time. Don't overtake it. So out of these four Newfoundland NHLers, who played the most NHL games? Okay. Michael Ryder, Danny Cleary, Keith Brown, or Darren Langdon? Well, that's going to be between Danny Cleary and Keith Brown. I will say, I'll say Danny Cleary. Danny Cleary it is. 938 yeah. games. Out of all Newfoundlanders, who played the least number of NHL games? Um, that'd be... Uh... Just know this. I should know someone, this. Someone uh, that uh, I might have played hockey with. Oh, Daryl Williams. Yes, Darryl, yes. Daryl Williams. He played two games. You know who he In, played them with? Played with L.A. He was uh, playing LA with Kings, playing with yeah. Gretzky, wasn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. played uh, two games in NHL, which was a great feat. And he's had a uh, he had a marvelous uh, uh, minor pro career. Yeah, and has had a awesome. NHL career as an assistant coach. Still well, you know, coaching to this day, I think he's with the Philadelphia Flyers right now. Okay, who <laughs> uh, who has scored the most goals? Are you doing uh, multiple guests here? I can I can give you four. Yeah, Cleary, Ryder, Brown, or Ryan Klo. Now that is going to hmm, that's probably going to be between Ryan Klo and and uh, Ryder, but I'll say Ryan Klo. I should have went with Ryder. Ryder. Jump of Moses. 237 goals for Michael Ryder. Pretty, about, pretty impressive about, in its own right, isn't it? It is. Who has scored the most points? Don't give me the same multiple guess. Give me. <laughs> well, I'll give you the same four. Cleary, Ryder, Brown, or Clough. Most points. Uh, I'll say Brown. Ah, you should have went with Ryder again. He's got the most uh, goals. <laughs> 484 points. I got a signed hockey card on my wall right here in front of me with Michael yeah. Ryder on it. So what in the name of God is wrong with me? You should know that. He's just shy of 500 points. That's pretty good. Yeah, it pretty is. Good for Michael Ryder. Yeah. Who, you, you, you're you going to get this one right. If you don't, I'm going to stop right That's now. We're not, gonna, we're not even, even going to go further. Gone. Earth's gone right out of it. Who has the most penalty minutes? Uh, Dar Darren Langdon. Yes, don't even yeah. need to give you multiple guesses yeah. on that one. Darren Langdon, 1,251 penalty minutes, although Keith Brown had 916. Yeah. I think I asked you this in the pilot episode, but I'm going to ask you again. Do you know who the first NHLer, first Newfoundlander to play in the NHL was? You did ask me this, and so no. <laughs> <laughs> And um, um, Alex Faulkner. It is Alex Faulkner, yes. Yeah, yeah. And do you know who he played first game with, first games with? His first games were played with Toronto. Correct. And then... Yeah. Then Chicago. The, maybe the next year, Detroit. Or Detroit, yes. Sorry, not Chicago. Yeah. Detroit, yeah. Well, everybody remembers the first guy. You do now after me asking you in a couple Twice. different episodes. Twice. Two different episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know who the second guy was? Uh, but before we get to that, uh, I just doubt, uh, I doubt on, that the the, on the theme, though, of the teacher schooling the, schooling the preacher, you have to admit that if you've given me the information and I've recalled it, then that's obviously the teacher doing his job. So, um, oh, thank <laughs> you. I'll take that. Uh, I'll, give I, you, I'll give you a, a good grade on that test. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, you, incredible teacher. Who was the second player? Yeah. You want to give me a year? The year that he played? Yeah. Um, I think the first year that he played would have been around 70, not sure, 75, somewhere around there. Um, for some reason, I'm the, the last name. I'm thinking he's a defenseman. Uh, th for some reason, the, the the last name White is coming to mind. Yeah, well, you're right on. Uh, not right in the sense that the second Newfoundlander, but we're going to get to the White guy oh, okay. shortly. <laughs> so I'm not right. By the name of Joseph Lundrigan. Oh, never heard of him. That's admit I never heard of him. No, probably not. But he did. Um, he originally did he signed in 1971 by the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay. And in 1972-73, he played 49 games with the Leafs. Yes, buddy. 
And then he was claimed by the Capitals. Uh, the Washington Capitals, of course, came into the NHL uh, in the um, expansion draft. Yeah. And he was claimed by them, and he played three games for the Washington Capitals. Interestingly, he played in uh, the 1960 and 61 Quebec International Pee Wee Hockey Tournament mm. with Cornerbrook. And he was successful. He played, uh, he won uh, two All Newfoundland Senior Championships with Cornerbrook Royals in 68 and 77, both before and after his NHL days. Yeah. And um, in 1971-72, playing for the Tulsa Oilers of the Central Hockey League, he was voted the club's top defenseman and the league's second all-star team. So he was a impressive player at that time. Yeah, sounds like it, actually. He was a defenseman. How about this guy? Do you remember a fellow by the name of Doug Grant? Yes. You do? I do know that name. You know what position he played? He was a goalie. He was. Yeah. St. Louis? Well, we might come to that in a second. Do you know okay. where he grew up in Newfoundland, Labrador? Grand Falls. Close. Well, mm, really Windsor. Close. Grand Falls, Windsor, Gander. <laughs> no, no. No. Springdale. Cornerbrook. By. Cornerbrook. Cornerbrook. Okay, Cornerbrook. All right. Doug Grant was from Cornerbrook. And what was your guess? The team that signed I, him first. Oh, I don't know about who signed St. Louis, first. did you? I, I said he played with St. Louis at one point, I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. But. Do but not him? signed by them. I'll say he was signed by, and I'm pulling it right out of my rear end here. Uh, I'll say he was signed by the New York Rangers. Mm, well, at least it's a original six team. He was signed by the Detroit Red Wings. Oh, okay. And then I was going to ask you what other team did he play for, but you already know. He played for the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues. He played Newfoundland Senior Hockey League as well. Yeah. With the Royals or no? With the Cornerbrook Royals, yeah. Yeah, right on. And in 71-72, I remember people talking about this. Memorial University had a uh, hockey team back in those days, and he played with them. And it was playing in the uh, Atlantic uh, Intercollegiate Competition that he got noticed. And yes, he was right. offered a two-year contract. His first season in NHL, 1973-74, played 37 games. For the Detroit Red Wings. For the Detroit Red Wings, yeah. So uh, after that, he bounced around uh, the NHL and the minor leagues for a uh, number of years beyond that. And he retired from hockey in 1982, went to work for Molson's, Ooh. and he's he retired from that after 23 years with Molson's, as uh, yes, a lot of those uh, sports guys uh, seem to do. Went to work back home with Molson's? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. good. So you mentioned a guy by the name of White. White, yes. Is it His Tony? name was Tony White. Tony, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what do you know about him? I know he played for the Washington Capitals. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it, probably. That's probably okay. the extent well, of my let, memory about it. <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about him, then I'll ask you a couple of questions, hey? All right. Yes, we'll have a go at it. So here's what I'm going to tell you about him. He played parts of five seasons in the NHL, which is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. His first season was 74-75. I think that was probably that was the first year of the Washington Capitals, I would imagine. Last mm -hmm. year he played in the NHL was 79-80. Played for two different teams, 164 games, 37 goals, and 65 points. And his best season was uh, his second one with the Capitals, 75-76. He scored 25 goals and 42 points, which is pretty, pretty yeah. good. And in fact, those totals stood as the best single-season NHL performance by a player from this province until this NHLer came along and tallied 25 goals and 63 points. Do you know who beat Tony White's? Newfoundland in the NHL points record for one season. Um, I'll say Michael Ryder. <laughs> good, good, good guess. <laughs> I was like, is he gonna go back. To I Ryder? gotta go. I gotta. I'm, I'm looking at it on the wall right now. Michael yeah, Ryder is right next to Maurice Richard, which I think is probably a little bit too much of a compliment. Yeah, but you, but, <laughs> but you need to go with Ryder, man. Yeah, yeah. He was a rookie when he did it. That's right. He had you a know great where rookie season. Newfoundland Tony White was from, and uh, now this requires multiple guests. I'm sorry. And these, and uh, this was a bit of a powerhouse at the time of producing some pretty uh, impressive uh, NHL or uh, pretty impressive hockey players. Yeah. The, the I'll only give you a hint. It's not St. John's. Uh, the other hot spot of uh, produced great hockey players in Newfoundland. They had a great program. Okay, Grand Falls. Grand Falls, it is. White, uh, Tony White started and ended his career by winning this coveted trophy. Do you know what trophy he won as a member of a team at the beginning and the end of his career? I think he was very young when he won it the first time, and he was a little older, obviously, as, after his NHL career when he won it the second time. Calder Cup. No. 
Uh, a little no, clo- little closer no, to home. Uh, the Avro uh, Cup or not? What's it called? Not the Avro, the Allen Cup. Is that what it's called? Uh, that yes, yeah, so that's for the Canadian um, Senior Hockey Championship. Yeah, yeah. No, a little okay. closer to home than that. Oh gosh, what's the, uh, the the Newfoundland Championship Cup? <laughs> yeah, you're not, you don't know it. It's I can't the remember the Herder name. Memorial. The Herder Trophy. Memorial. I would have never remembered that in a million nights. What was the name of the Grand Falls uh, senior hockey team that uh, won the Herder Memorial Trophy with Tony White on it? What, what is was their the nickname? Question. Were they the Were they the Cataracts? They indeed they were the Cataracts. Of course, yeah. yeah. I had to reach way back, way, way yeah. back. Yeah, yes. Remember George McLaren. Giving George up McLaren. Line, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 That's exactly Cataracts right. Yeah. Yeah. Beat it, beat, beat the Shamrocks. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Capitals won again. So, yeah. So his uh, final year came in 84 85. He helped the Cornerbrook Royals win the herder, not yep. the Grand Falls Cataracts at that time when he came back. Yeah. And, um, Helped them advance through two rounds of the Allen Cup um, that was held in Cornerbrook. All right, Kevin, here's another Newfoundlander that you may or may not have heard tell of. Okay. Bob Gladney. Oh, I have to confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've never heard talk of this man. <laughs> okay. So. You've never heard of him. I, I did hear tell of him back in the day, but yeah. um, but not more than one of the more well-known Newfoundlanders that have played in the NHL. Yeah. Any well, I no, I don't have any idea where he come know. from. But <laughs> any idea where Bob was born by chance? What'd you say his last name was again? Bob Gladney. Any any know? Do you know where he might have been born by chance? Well, I'm gonna say he was born in Come by Chance. Right on. He was born in Come by Chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, uh, come I by come by that was, answer by chance as well. By the way, yeah. They, they come a chance wasn't known for their uh, strong minor hockey no. dynasties. So no. he played his minor hockey in Clarenville, which is quite known for having produced uh, some great yeah. Uh, yeah. talented hockey players for sure. Yeah. He was a defenseman. He played junior hockey in Ontario with the Oshawa Generals yes, of all teams. Bobby Orr's That's old a, team. That is a storied franchise in the OHL. How about you take a guess at which Canadian NHL team drafted Bob Gladney? Okay, I'll say Montreal. Okay, it was the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. He was drafted in the second round, 24th overall. How about that? Wow. That's pretty good. That is really high, actually. Guess who was drafted right behind Bob Gladney? Well, you're not going to know, but I'm going to tell you. Who? 25th, yeah. Dave Semenko. Oh, man. Uh, that's... Uh, Wayne Gretzky's policeman. Uh huh. 33rd behind Gladney, John Tonelli. Wow. The great and, New York Islander. And 54th behind mm. Bob Gladney, Gordy Roberts. Wow. Those are some big names. So, believe it or not, he didn't get to play for Toronto. No, they traded him. They traded him. Traded him in 1981 to the LA Kings. Okay. They traded him for Don Luce. Remember him? Yes, I do. Yeah who was a solid NHLer, but he was at the end of his career and he only played yeah. 39 games with the Leafs uh, yeah. at, in that year. Bob Gladney played one game with the Kings. Okay. And uh, he played in the minor leagues with the New Haven Nighthawks, which, incidentally, yeah. is a team that uh, we've mentioned them already. Our old friend uh, Daryl Williams played for, for quite yeah, a number was, of years. It was. He signed with the Penguins in 83 and he played 13 games at that point. Okay. But sadly, uh, Bob Gladney's career came to a um, premature end when, due to an eye injury. That's the thing that used to really do to man a lot. to see what he could have done in the NHL. Obviously. I see what you did there. You can get the chance to see what he could have done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's bring, uh, bring it up closer to some time when you were watching hockey, Kevin. Okay. So More into the what we would after, call for us modern times. <laughs> yeah, what we would call our mem- within our memory. Within our memory, although late seventies, I do remember those other guys. Uh, I do remember White. See, it's, it's White and um, and Grant. Like I remember them. Like I remember the hockey oh, yeah. cards, right? But yeah, I remember but, Tony White's hockey cards. Should have kept. Yeah, them. but those it's all my uh, hockey cards. But whoever your other fellow is, there, Bob Gladney or whatever. I don't know who he is. I, I never heard talk. Oh, I, re- I remember him. I remember oh, okay. him being mentioned on yeah. on, uh, on the sports news. Yeah, by George McLaren. George McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> 
George McLaren and the guy on CBC, uh, Carl Lake. Remember Carl oh, yeah, Lake? Carl Lake, yes. <laughs> he yeah. was, uh, man, he knew there, there was no sports in Newfoundland. No way, man. No, he was an encyclopedia. Imagine that. There used to be sports on the news desk. Yeah. Before was, sports was, channels. The only reason we watched it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it. <laughs> Waiting for that sports broadcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, John Slaney, you must have heard of him. I did indeed. Great professional career, both in the NHL and the AHL. Yeah. Perhaps best known for his game-winning goal at the World Junior Hockey Championships in 1991. Yeah. He's from St. John's. Yes, he is. He's a product of the Celtics Minor Hockey Association. I'm sure you've heard tell of them over the years. Yes, yeah. But here's what you might not know, and that's why I'm going to ask you the question. Okay, I'm ready. He played Junior A hockey for four seasons mm. in the OHL. Do you know what team he played for? I'll, I'll, I can give you four choices if you don't know it. Uh, straight give, me, off. give me the four choices. And uh, it's not going to make it that much easier for you, I don't think. But uh, Belleville, Belleville, Peterborough, London, or Cornwall? I feel like it's Cornwall. You've got a really good feeling because you're right. Yeah. Uh, Cornwall Royals, I think? I think they're called the Cornwall Royals. They, they, they were called the Cornwall Royals. I don't even Royals. know if they exist anymore. They don't do exist they? anymore, no. No. 262 points in his OHL career. As a defenseman. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. He was drafted by the Washington Capitals in the mm. first round. So another Newfoundlander drafted by the Capitals. Yeah. Do you know, so he was in the first round, but do you know what position he was drafted at? What number? And the number is a single digit. I'll give you that hint. I will say he went eighth. Oh, so close. And ninth, didn't he? He went ninth. Yeah. Which That's is it. Also, I won't sleep tonight. I was off by one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also pretty darn impressive, right? Oh, that's huge. <laughs> so as uh, I mentioned just a second ago, he was best known for tie-breaking goal to give Canada the gold medal in 1991 World Junior Hockey Championships. Final game of that uh, championships, um, he scored a goal in the third period versus the USSR. And uh, that's an iconic moment. Gets played yeah. almost as much as, as really most they, of those game-winning goals. Uh, I feel like they show it every year at the World Junior Tournament, actually, when they're covering it. Yeah. Every year I see that goal again. But do you remember what city that game was held in, what the, the they hosted the tournament? What Canadian city? Um, it was either Saskatoon or Regina. I think it was Saskatoon. Deadly. It was yeah. Yeah. Saskatoon. Do you know what the score was? Before he scored the goal, I'm really drilling down on you. Yes, now. you really are now. This will be a guess, but I'll say it was three to three. Oh, so close again. <laughs> two to two. Two to two, yeah. So she was a close one. <laughs> she was a close game. I know that I remember that, but was it the was it the goal uh the game winning goal, goal, wasn't it? Was it the gold medal game? It was a gold medal game, yeah. No, it wasn't. No? No. Oh, come on. You know why? Why? They didn't have gold medal games back then. Oh, well, no. <laughs> it was the winning game, the championship game. It wasn't the championship. It was oh, really? they had a round-robin format. I don't know if you remember. but oh, I Olympics see. Years. Yes, yes, yes. I had forgotten that. But, yeah, there was no – like, they didn't have a playoff. Uh, right. So when you're looking at that, you're thinking, okay, this was the gold medal game. game. It was yeah. not the gold medal game. But it was the same thing same because effect. Canada and USR ended up with the same record, five wins, one loss. Canada had to beat the USSR to win goal. It ended up being the same as a gold medal game, but only by chance. Oh, so it was it was like they had they had the extra game because they were tied. Oh, I don't know about that. Still okay. might have been round robin. Oh, we I see. Know. But they was, were as was, they went into the game, they were tied. Correct. Darren Langdon. Darren Langdon. Another guy who would be great to He'd get. Be a great to, guest. Come on. Yeah. come on, Darren Langdon. If you're listening, you know what? I think, I think all these guys would be great guests. Yeah, if any of you are listening, we're here. <laughs> If you happen to be listening, do you know where Darren Langdon is from? I think you might. Um, he's a I, very proud son of this particular community. He lives there today. and uh, He's from Cornerbrook. Very close to Cornerbrook, but he's, not Cornerbrook. Uh, Deer Lake. Ah, he's from yes. Deer Lake. I knew that. He's from Deer Lake. Deer Lake Red Wings, man. Yes, he's that's very, right. Yes, yes, yes. Pretty much ran the team for yes, years. Yes, right? yes, yes. Deer Lake, yes. Yep. But he played, he, he played in the NHL for 13 seasons, Kevin. That's a long time. That's not a cup of coffee. It's not. 521 NHL games. He was undrafted. Yeah. But he was signed. Do you know who signed him? Um, who did he break in with? Montreal? No. Mm, New York? Yep. Yeah. New York Rangers. Yeah. He played for four NHL teams other than the New York Rangers. How about you try naming as many of them as you can get? Montreal. That's one. Um. Darren Langdon. 
Montreal, Washington, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ottawa. No, no. All right. You better give me the rest. <laughs> there is one other Canadian city that he played for Vancouver, Vancouver. Oh, well, yes, I he do. Remember played, playing. He also played for Carolina and yeah. New Jersey. Oh, did he play? I don't remember him being in New Jersey, but yeah. yeah. And he scored 16 goals, 23 assists, 39 points in his career. Well known, of course, as an enforcer and a protector of his teammates. Yeah. His penalty minute stats are quite impressive, as I mentioned to you before. <laughs> yeah. 1,251 total penalty minutes. During his time in New York, he often worked, of course, protecting uh, the greatest player that ever lived, well, Wayne this Gretzky. Guy, this guy, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, he was primarily, um, in terms of his fights, apparently he was described as a second-half fighter who would dodge the first 10 to 15 punches before unloading. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> so that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a I'll, I'll, I'll just dodge 10 I'll, or 15 uh, punches, just, and then uh, I'll start. I'll just take a, little, take a few for the team, and then I'll let loose. That's a fellow you want to be in a racket with. <laughs> so he's also known for his bouts with other NHL enforcers. Of course, one of the more well-known enforcers of that era, back when there were enforcers, was yep. Ty Domi. Yep. How many tilts did he have with Ty Domi? Well, oh, that'd be a stab in the wind, but I'll say six. Uh, pretty good. He had four. Yeah. He had four. Okay. He also fought Zdeno Chera four oh. times. Oh. Think about that. <laughs> this guy <laughs> must have been fearless. Yeah, he had to be. So, Kevin, which of Langdon's former teammates joked on the yeah. occasion of his last game before retirement that yeah. Langdon was taking most of the memorabilia that he was signing for his bar in Deer Lake? Well, I'll say, well, I mean, I'll say the, uh, the, the big one, which is Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, and most other people retired. Nobody even knows it's their last game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, they just end up without no yeah. contract. No okay. contract yet. I'm, See you I'm, later. I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. No, he was one of Gretzky's favorite teammates and was Langdon was invited to his fantasy hockey camp in Las Vegas for years after uh, he was retired. So uh, It's interesting to me how, like, if you follow the crew that are close to Gretzky, a lot of them were those enforcers, like the crew that were close to. Yeah. Semenko yeah. and all that, right? Like all of his buddies. Yeah, pretty, uh, and humble, humble down-to-earth people too, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Just, yeah. just uh, great guys and... Uh, yeah. Um, and that might have something to do with it too. I would say Gretzky so. I got that... Uh, Comes from humble roots. Comes from very humble roots, yeah. So, fellow that you wasn't so sure had so many points, we'll talk about next, Michael Ryder. Yes. Yeah, well, that wasn't that I wasn't sure. You were mixing (laughs) me up by giving me other names. (laughs) So, Michael played 12 seasons in NHL. Not bad. For four four different teams. Now, you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, so you you would have followed Ryder quite a bit. So, maybe you can name the four teams that Ryder played for. Ryder played for Montreal, uh, for Boston, uh, for New Jersey. That's three. Um, so another team. The other one is for, the other one. He couldn't play. Do I think he signed with this team as a free agent after as, Boston? Mm, you know, I, I'll say uh, I'll say Carolina, but that's a guess in the wind. I don't think it was. But. Yeah, no, it's Dallas. 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 Yes, Stars. that's right. He yeah. did go to Dallas. Could not remember the last one. So he played his junior hockey with the Hull Olympics three seasons. Yeah. Had 128 goals and 129 assists. 257 Wicked. points in three seasons. Wicked. So he was always a great point, uh, point getter. Yeah. He was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in the 1998 entry draft. And I think his draft placement was like way down uh, 200 and something or something like that. It was pretty... Uh, um, what round was Ryder selected and I kind of have already given that away for you. I wasn't listening, obviously, but I'll say, <laughs> I'll say he went in the first round. Michael Ryder? No, he went Michael, in the second round. He went in the second Mi- round. <laughs> Michael Ryder went in the eighth round. Come on. 216th overall. The guy who got a 200 and some odd points or more than that from what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. He was, uh, he's one of those, you know, those, uh, late round gems that, um, uh, kind of come into their own and uh, he certainly uh, one thing he could do was score and uh, he he started out in the uh, ECHL and moved his way up and uh, had a really really good NHL career as a result it's wicked won a Stanley Cup yes with the Boston Bruins sadly sadly didn't win it with, <laughs> with the uh, Montreal would have been nice to win it in Montreal with his buddy Claude Julian yeah with the victory he became the second Newfoundlander to win the Stanley Cup. You know who the first one was? Uh, yeah, Danny Cleary. Danny Cleary, yeah. Yeah. 
So he, as is the custom, he brought the Stanley Cup home with him. Yeah. And at a ceremony in St. John's, so on his way, before he got, went, got to Bonavista, mm -hmm. they had a ceremony, um, I think it was on a rooftop down downtown St. John's with the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. He famously watched as the cup toppled over from a table. <laughs> he just had just laid it on. What part of the cup was damaged? Uh, I think it was the top part of the cup. Ding, ding. Yeah, the, the bowl, right? The bowl, yeah. Yeah. It stopped being a bowl and became an Maybe. old bowl. <laughs> and that's not the first time either, probably. No, well, I think it was just it got dented this year too, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, got dented, I think, before they got it off the ice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. so, yeah, no, he had a great career, some great contracts. Um, 2011, 2012, 35 goals. Awesome. Kevin, do you know what number? You know what number he wore in Montreal? I know that. For, I know you know that. In Montreal, uh, didn't he wear seventy four? Oh no, he wore seventy three. Seventy three. Oh man, pretty, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he, no, he did. Wore. Say so you're right. As soon as you said it, it's like no, he wore seventy three. So yeah. I thought that was going to be like the easy question. So the hard question <laughs> is, what number did he wear in New Jersey? His uh, last team. I'll give you multiple choice if you like. Yeah, I'd like that, yeah. 7, 17, 27, or 37? 17. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that, or that was just a guess? No, I do remember. Like, only only hearing it. I wouldn't have pulled it out of my head, but when you said it, it's like I could see that. All right. How about a modern-day Newfoundlander in NHL? Well, let's do that. Let's talk about somebody who's still packing them in the back of the net. <laughs> right on. Dawson Mercer. Oh, I know that young fella. So Dawson played for the Tri-Pin Ice, under-15, AAA, Newfoundland team, mm -hmm. Phantom team. He recorded 68 points in 24 games. It's pretty, pretty impressive. First question, what Quebec Major Junior Hockey League team did Mercer play for? The Voltigeurs. Yeah, there were two, in fact. So Drummondville Voltigeurs. Yeah. And, and uh, he must have been traded, I guess, because he played for the Did Cataracts, too? No. Chakudami. Chakudami. The Saguenay, yeah. So he also played for Team Canada. Wigget. World Juniors. You're well aware of that. Played for a couple of years, I think. So Mercer signed a three-year entry-level contract with New Jersey Devils on December 24, 2020. And then in his first season, on October 19th, he scored his first NHL goal. And this is going to be a hard one, I think, for you. What team did he score the goal against? I think he scored it against Montreal. No, he didn't. No? No. Oh. This team is a pretty new team. Oh, he's Seattle. The Seattle uh, Kraken. Yeah, he scored it against the Seattle Kraken. Do you know what goalie? Um, Grubauer. Do you know another goalie on Seattle? Um, uh, not Knight. What's his name? Uh, do, 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 do. First name, Joey? Uh, Joey Decord. Yeah. Yeah. Dracord, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's Dacord, but okay, Dracord will work to it. I think it's Dacord. Okay. Yeah. Do you know who assisted on the goal? Uh, Thomas Tartar. How'd you know that? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I do feel like I watched that highlight. <laughs> and, be and because, and <laughs> you because, know it because you saw it, right? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I know I saw the goal in the highlights, but it, just because Thomas Tartar is in my head because he was a Montreal Canadian, I sure, probably right. took notice of it. That's why I asked the question, to be honest with you, because it was Montreal <laughs> Canadians. Yeah. Connection. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned, he uh, played for Team Canada uh, in um, two World Junior Ice Hockey Championships, won a gold medal first Ooh. year, and won a silver medal the second year. So he's already quite the uh, decorated uh, athlete. Yes, I'd say. And of course, uh, the other Newfoundlander that we um, celebrate this summer, of course, is. Uh, Alex Newell. Alex who, Nuke. Who has become the third Newfoundland-born player to win the Stanley Cup. Yes. And they had a great parade. Now, where did, they, did, where did they bring it, Daryl? Did they bring it some of the neat spots in St. John's or what? Yeah, they did indeed. Uh, he brought it. I don't uh, remember seeing him bring it to the Confederation Building. I think oh, he went yeah. to the Janeway, I believe, and uh, went downtown to George Street and had oh, a big nice. uh, reception down there. Awesome. So there you go. That's, uh, that's some of the Newfoundlanders who have played in the NHL. And we're excited to have our guest for world famous in Newfoundland, uh, the great comedian, 
Mike Lynch, who no doubt is more than world famous, even in Newfoundland, I think. Welcome, Mike. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right world famous, isn't he? Daryl, introduce our guest properly. All right, here we go. So Mike Lynch is the star of the Outhouse, T- Outhouse Every TV. Every Wikipedia. Every, <laughs> yes, that's off your webpage. Is the off Outhouse. Webpage. Star of the Outhouse TV. Mike has become a well-known face in Canadian comedy and has gained a large online following that continues to grow today. With his wide range of sketch characters, he has generated countless viral videos and garnered over 10 million views. For the past four years, his annual sketch and stand-up shows, Getting to Know Me, has sold out three shows each at the Holy Heart Theatre in St. John's and continues to sell out shows all across the country, yeah, for making sure. his mommy proud, apparently. Mike uh-huh. also has several tracks Same. featured in the Just for Laughs originals on Sirius XM Radio. He is a prolific creator and a relentless performer. I don't stop. And what we want to know, Mike, is have you ever... That came from the heart. Have you, <laughs> have you ever had a show in Tilt Cove? Tilt Cove. Yeah. Other than that one stadium show I did? Uh, <laughs> no. But we, we no. Had it. Have you Where's ever Tilt been Cove? to Tilt Cove? No, I'd love to, though. Well, so you earlier on, is? Is there, let's just ask him. Do you know where it is? Tilt Cove is by. Good question, boy. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pretend to know that one. I'm going to ask. Oh, I, I this, this is. We started up. today's podcast. As I asked Kevin this question, he he didn't know where it was. I didn't actually. know where it was. Either. Off Beer and Peninsula. Mm-hmm. No, the other way. Uh, it's all the way out on the Bayvert Peninsula. Oh, and okay. and and Mike, you know how many people live in Tilt Cove? 80, 38. 30. It's the smallest municipality in all of Canada. Is it? Yes. yes. Uh, how many? Webpage says five. I think it's four. <laughs> and they're still serviced? They have a, they have a town council. Uh, all four people are related, and they're all on the town council. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's be hard to... But if you ever find yourself out on the Bay River Peninsula... Take a dart down, man. It's worth saying. <laughs> be a good, be a good question. I never thought of uh, as I listened to Cecil O'Brien is one of my favorites. So your your characters. Where's he from? Thank you very much. But yeah. it changes every time. Like I used uh, to start off. He's from the Southern Shore, and then I used to be like, um, I met some misses from Calvert, and she goes, "Where's Cecil from?" I'm like, Southern Shore, and she goes, "Can he be from Cal- Calvert?" I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I was just like, I suppose he's from Calvert. <laughs> and then uh, in one sketch, I like change it to like Placentia Bay because that's like around yeah. where my 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 grandparents are from and my parents are from. Yeah. Uh, and then someone like call out, I was like, oh, that Cecil's from Southern Shore. Like it's like <laughs> it's like you start to susp- Fake news. suspect that Santa Claus ain't real or something. <laughs> I was like, listen, he's made up. I'm sorry. <laughs> hate to have to break it Cecil's from St. John's Cecil's from St. John's he sounds like he's from St. John's over. one of my yeah. favorites is when he, when he was teaching to drive cab I, I, that was I, 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 <laughs> undercover boss with the cab driver thank you man Newfoundland every man man he can be from any part of Newfoundland he good too when, everyone got a Cecil in their life yeah I know listen hold on to that uh, Newfoundland Herald hat you got eh because uh, she's closed down uh, now right oh buddy I can't wait to action that off yeah no, you guess I'm gonna get my get, get all my taxes paid off Perfect. Now, listen, you, you're you're on the road. I, I, we're trying to book Mike for the last, I don't know, month and a half. But you, but he said what he did was send me his tour schedule and said pick a day when I'm not performing. And those are pretty few and far between. So you've been everywhere. I've been steady going. Yeah, just we started our best con comedy tour mid July, and we're gonna be going until November six. But there's been breaks in between, which is nice. But even during those breaks, you're always kind of yes. working on something. So and you're out west right now. That's where you're coming at us from. Yeah, Cal Gray. Yeah, got a few shows ahead this week out there. Yeah, we got three coming up. Then we got another four day break, and then we got a few more in Alberta. Then we go to Yellowknife. Then we go to BC. Wow. So if you're listening from out in that area, boys, look for uh, the Best Kind Comedy Tour. You're going to see yeah. Mike Lynch and the boys. So do you yeah. get a mixture of audience or mostly Newfoundlanders? Definitely, mo- definitely mostly Newfoundlanders. Um, a lot of people like either pe- pe- the folks who aren't Newfoundlanders are either um, like people who are friends of Newfies right. or yes, yeah, right. um, or like a, a partner or whatever, right, sure. or 
uh, or even just East Coasters, like people from New Brunswick or Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, that just can relate to it or whatever. Yeah. Right now. And then just some people, yeah, and probably scatter random. Yes. But yeah, mostly Newfoundlanders for the most part. Newfoundland, we're definitely lucky to be, um, I guess, have our Newfoundland following. Otherwise, yes. we'd be working nine to five. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's right, buddy. All right, listen, we're going to test your knowledge now, whether it's uh, you or, yeah. or, or or Cecil or Nan or, your, or any of your various characters or yourself, a uh, man of many, many uh, faces and voices. So we're going to check you out on a few categories. Oh. I got five for you to pick from. Uh, I'm going to flip a coin here in a second. I decide who goes first. Each get a question in each category. If you get it wrong, we'll switch it over to your buddy to see if he can pick it up. Most points in the end wins a round the world trip uh, you can go all the way around your Airbnb night for no extra charge. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so, so here are the categories. Categories. Long Harbor, Urkel. Okay. Okay. Long Harbor, Vale. Okay. 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 Valet. So so valet. Valet. Is that what they call yeah. it? <laughs> I fixed I that. I want to correct it because I'm like, but... well. I've, I've never heard of it. Well you have to understand. I've been here for 25 years. I've never heard of it. So it's called Valet. Valet, yeah, that's valet. how they pronounce it. Okay, valet, Long Harbor, valet. New mainlander. Uh, yes, no, it's not. <laughs> um, Mary Meeting Road. You familiar? Oh man, this guy's stalking me. Yeah, Mary Meeting Road. <laughs> Arts and cultural centers. Okay. And whose line is it anyway? So you can see, who's, you can see what the, who's how this is stacked. Uh, in favor. Geez, this is universal. Right? You you got this right off Jeopardy, didn't you? I did. Yes, sir. The same thing. <laughs> same questions. All right. I'm going to flip a coin. You call it, uh, Mike, heads or tails? Heads. Heads it is. You go first. <laughs> All right. Pick a category. Pick a category. We'll say, uh, I want to say, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, whatever this question is, I'm going to get it wrong just because I'm sucker member details, but I'll say Merry Meeting Road. Okay. Merry Meeting Road for Mike Lynch. Uh, where'd you grow up, Mike? Oh, shit. That's a good one. <laughs> That's not your question. Well, where did you grow up? Mike? Oh, I don't get yeah. uh, Mirror Meeting Road, St. John's. Okay, so you might notice. This will be hard. Okay, Mike. On the, the walls of this establishment, located at 24 Mary Meeting Road, are okay. mostly covered with hockey memorabilia celebrating the career of John Slaney, the assistant. Oh, uh, Joe's uh, Barbershop. Yes, Joe's Barbershop. Yeah, shop. baby. Yeah. This hair's there. been touched by Kathy Slaney herself. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So, so there you go. So yeah, it says there's yeah. also photos of other family members, as well as the man known as the sweeper. Do you know the sweeper? The sweeper is a guy, uh, the late Jim Pettigrew, who came into the shop every day for 35 years. He didn't work there, but he would pop in and sweep the floor with, and chat with the customers. My God, I don't even think the Slaney's would know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose oh, I remember that. Know. I'm just going yeah. for me here, Cuff. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. I, I, I'm glad no, you knew that one right away. Perhaps you'll know the one I got for uh -huh. Daryl, too. I'm sure you will. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Daryl, have you ever gone axe throwing? Axe throwing? Yeah. I've probably <laughs> thrown a few at you maybe over the years. Well, yeah, I feel oh. like you did, actually. <laughs> but yeah, but not. I'm probably going to throw one at you after I hear this question. Not officially, then. So if you've done so in St. John's, chances are you visited 95 Merry Meeting Road. Now, at 95 Merry Meeting Road, you go there today, you'll be welcome to have a cocktail or a local craft beer. And if you want to bring your own food in, that's no problem, too. They're happy with that. No problem. Um, all their venues allow for outside food to be brought in, delivered, or dropped off. Uh, what's this place called, Daryl? Well, I, I only know one uh, axe-throwing place that wasn't St. John's. Probably not the right one, but I'm going to go with it anyway. That's Jack Axes. You got it. Jack Am Axes I? is correct. Yeah, I actually moved on Mary Meeting Road, which is really odd because that was always our our neighborhood convenience store. Oh, was it? And then oh. it's like this really small location. And anyway, it works. It's always black, but parking sucks, but obviously way cheaper rent. God love them. Yeah. And yeah, Jack Axe is a good time. Yeah. You haven't oh. been in there, have you, Mike? Nobody threw an axe at I, you in there? No. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I've been there a couple times. I've been there once since it moved to Mary Meeting. Me and uh, Hako actually with the outhouse. I, we I, went I, in. We went in. We had a little spontaneous drunk action. session, and then Mrs. gave us these like these like little daggers. We were like throwing daggers too. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Honor Road. It's like literally like six houses away from one. 
Oh wow! I feel like oh. uh, Uncle. I feel like Cecil O'Brien will be good at throwing axes. I dare say he was. Take <laughs> out ten trees at once. <laughs> so right. Mary Meeting Road. That's like that's right up on the top of town, really, isn't it? Yeah, downtown. Like past Goes Mary right across. Road, I feel like that's when it becomes downtown. Yeah, yeah. And like you know, debatably, I guess Mary Meeting Road can be considered downtown, sort of, I suppose. But yeah. Yeah, it's like right on that border for sure. Perfect. All right, Daryl, you get to pick a category now. You got two eras of Long Harbor, either Urkel or Valet. Uh, you've got uh, uh, we got some arts and cultural centers, and whose line is it anyway? Well, I had the opportunity to visit Urkel a couple times, so let's go with that. Okay, um, Urkel era. How old are you? That's how that's how old I am. Uh, Daryl, what is Urkel short for? <laughs> Urko short for yeah do you want multiple guests yeah okay. i do <laughs> he gets guesses well you get some too in a minute I better so, get the play lines. all right hang on exporting resources company of canada experimental resources company of canada electric oh. reduction company of canada making these tough oh yeah uh, no this is made by i'm tough i don't know i'm gonna go with the last one electric what the fun we're supposed to have yeah, well, what about the phone? Well, waiting for <laughs> waiting for you on that. Okay, so that's what you're here for. That's what you're here. So you said Daryl, what? Say again. You the third one, electric something or another. Election uh, electric reduction company of Canada. That is correct. Urko. Yeah, oh, Jeez. Oh. I, I can't remember getting two right in in Kevin's questions. He, he must have. Uh, he says he toured it, uh, Mike, but he must have been there, like uh, reading the fine print on the wall or something. I was there when they built it, by. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's try. Let's try. Uh, Mike, now, Mike, you got family in Long Harbor. Let's get to that because that's yeah. why this is in here, really. Yeah. Uh, Nan and Papa are there now. Mom, uh, mom's uh, mom and dad. Okay. So, so hello to them. If you're listening to this, let's find out how much your grandson knows about Long Harbor and Urco. Hi, Nanny and Papa. <laughs> hello, Nanny and Papa. <laughs> okay. A great part of Long Harbor's history, of course, was the Urco plant. Construction began on August 1st, 1966, before any of the three of us were taught about. Uh, with Joey Smallwood himself presiding at the official sod turning. At its peak uh, in the construction phase, it employed 1,300 people. Smallwood himself stipulating that 90% of the workers had to be Newfoundlanders. Engineers and managers were sourced uh, uh, internationally. Joey. Wicked, eh, Joey? Uh, the plant was completed in 68 at a total cost of 40 million bucks, which included the cost of two ships. Uh, Daryl, what were the name of those ships? <laughs> no, they were the Albright Explorer and the yes, Albright Titanic. And the <laughs> just like the Titanic and the Albright Pioneer, those ship vessels were the first of their kind. They carried 5,000 tons, Mike, 5,000 tons of what from Long Harbor to Portishead, England. What do you want multiple guests now? Uh, yeah, give me multiple guesses. Okay, as best asbestos, phosphorus, copper, or nickel. Now, your grandmother and grandfather are listening. It's not asbestos, no, that'd be wicked. Okay, you know what? Um, phosphorus. He got it. He got it. She got the right answer. I um, suppose uh, uh, the plant was gone by the time you were born, probably, was it? I was so. Yeah, now a lot of it still, like, like you know that big, long deposit of it? Like, it was yes. almost like, like tailings, yeah. It's like... there, and I guess valet kind of took over the exact site. Now, my pop used to be a, be a pipe fitter on the site. Was he um, with Urko? Yeah, he was with Urko. Um, yeah, so like since it opened, I'm pretty sure, or like, or close to it. He's wow. worked at Urco for, yeah, I think since it closed, if I'm not mistaken. Or Well, that's good. So far, the both of you are uh, hitting these right out of the park. No problem. These I thought these questions were going to be hard. Mike, you got no, you're just nutting this, you. Think nothing. Nothing, boy. So, yeah, that's, you're going to throw down now. Um, Definitely not Googling it on the side. No, you definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your categories left now, Mike. You get to pick is uh, uh, Long Harbor Valet. Um, you we've, we've gone through Mary Meeting Road, Arts and Cultural Centers, or whose line is it anyway? I must say, I know for the viewers, doing the last two might be the best, but I'm gonna say Valet because I'm trying yeah. to I'm trying to take home the take home the W here. You're gonna get it, Lenny. So here we go. Valet is a global mining company with headquarters in Brazil. They are leaders in the production of iron ore and the second largest producers of nickel. 
Uh, the Long Harbor Processing Plant began operations in 2014, currently employing about 500 people, the vast majority of whom are from Newfoundland and Labrador. Nickel concentrate is shipped to Long Harbor to be processed into finished nickel and associated copper and cobalt products from what other community in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador? Uh, uh, Where's the nickel coming in from in Newfoundland and oh, Labrador? Oh, is Bay. <laughs> yes, sir. You got that one right. <laughs> Daryl, yours is just as easy. Sure. <laughs> well, I, I think so it will be. You throw it up and you feel extra bad about it. Now, listen, I got to say before I ask the question, Mike, uh, Daryl's a teacher. So pressure's on, buddy. Oh, oh no. There's no pressure. At, at the, at I, a, I can feel it even better about myself. Yeah. So, Daryl, at a time when this school had been working hard applying for government grants to help expand its popular music program, Valet Long Harbor Operations announced a three-year funding commitment. The donation provided students who play one of four instrumental groups, including guitar, accordion, concert band, and violin, with inspiration to take their music just that extra note further. Valet's sponsorship was used to bring in three musicians. Uh, Elizabeth Philpot, a former music teacher uh, specializing in concert and band. Kelly Russell, a performer, of course, and private instructor and soon-to-be guest here on uh, Guam Bay. And Jason March, a performing folk and pop musician. Uh, this focused the students on their particular areas of expertise and taught the kids various songs and techniques to further their playing. And it was a wildly successful and popular program at what school? Um, I'll say it's uh, Laval and Pazentia. Mm, that's not right. Now I no? got to go to Mike. Mike, do you know what? Do you know what school received that fund? Of course, I'm going <laughs> to have to go with trying to channel channel Kelly Russell. Where did she go? See, in my head, I'm like, oh, I. Must have heard that somewhere. Holy Heart. Holy Heart is not. It is uh, it's a it's a school very close to Daryl. PWC, PWC. No, it's called Woodland Elementary. Ah. So oh, it's, uh, it's like it's in college. it's in New Harbor. It's out in New Harbor. Ah. It's a uh, it's in the schooling district that uh, it's actually one of Daryl's collector schools. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a, uh, and uh, they I, I think officially it's in Dildo. Yeah, well, on their web, on Valet's webpage, it says New Harbor. Yeah, obviously, it makes sense for it to be close to Valet. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, well, I, I, you know what? I was thinking Holy Heart too, simply because of the music program. Right? Yes, of course. Yeah, I was just thinking of Kelly Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, Kelly's coming on uh, very soon, actually. So we'll see how he does with this racket right too. I, 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 I'm not not night. No, God, no. That's not the day. I mean, listen, you're all <laughs> we can handle. Today after you, we'll be sick of this. <laughs> all right uh, yeah. you picked valet didn't you mike i yeah. did but i think yeah. you already asked valet question yeah no so i'm going, going, going to daryl i'm going to daryl to pick next category okay next category i'm gonna yep. go with uh we'll do the um arts and culture places first okay arts and culture centers leave the who said it i, I was gonna say if he's calling the places i think i got a good shot here all right <laughs> this I one daryl to one once i've been to two um uh, have you been to any of them, Mike? I've uh, performed at some. Okay. <laughs> okay. Opened in Pippi Park, Daryl, St. John's. The St. John's Arts and Culture Center has a, th uh, a, a thousand seat main theater, um, a se 75 seat black box basement theater, public libraries. You've been to that one? Public Where, libraries for children. Like six years old. Okay. Were you in the library too? Many, many times. Okay. Big uh, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a barrel of fun, doesn't he? He, I've been in Saint. I was there. Betty, Betty. It's like he's bragging about it many, many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read. There's not a book in there I haven't read. Uh, there's lots of galleries in there. Have you been in the galleries, Daryl? No. Oh, he's not artsy then, Mike. He's he don't go to. Okay, the... he's, he's cool. There's there's galleries in the Arts and Culture Center. Are he's book. Yeah, there's like little weird nooks and crannies. I remember going there when I was a kid on field trips. But there is yeah. like, forget about that. There's random yes. stuff that no, but that someone might look at once a year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so all that to say, Daryl, what year was the St. John's Arts and Cultural Center open? Uh, I think uh, 1967. Woo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. He got it. Listen, he what is behind, what is behind your camera view, Daryl? Show yeah. me your screen. Send a screenshot <laughs> right now. Back here. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to know what's back there. Uh 1967. Are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason? Uh <laughs> I was born in 67, so I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking <laughs> I must have I must have read that somewhere and it, it kind of clicked. 
I course, think everything happened in 1967. All yes. the significant Expo, seven, man. Expo happened in 67, that's for sure. There you go. All right. Uh, all so arts and, uh, arts and culture centers for Michael Lynch. There are six facilities in the province. Can you tell me where they are? E oh, this is a wow. breeze. <laughs> Stephenville, Lab City, Corner Brook. We got Grand Falls, Windsor, Gander. And Sinjan, you got it. You got them all six. Have you performed in all six? Not Grand Falls, Windsor. Okay, because uh, we usually go to our uh, buddy Sean Feener owns the Classic Theater, and it's okay. uh, a lot more affordable, and he's great to us. So we always we always choose a classic when we roll through Grand Falls, Windsor. Right now, now what would what would Nan, your character Nan, say about the experience of the arts and culture centers overall? Oh, it was really nice. I can't do the voice. I uh, <laughs> you know, my voice all raspy today. No. What about Cecil? Nan would think it's very nice spot. It's very nice for comedy. Okay. <laughs> for comedy. So say, not bad, but it's no, it's no legion, but it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the legion. Not, not the legion, boy, but it's not bad. All right, so we're back to one last category, yeah? And that's uh, whose line is it anyway? Which Newfoundlander said this? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who said, so, who said it? Who said this? Are you bitter, Barbara? Uh, it, was it Tommy Sexton? Mm, close. I'll try again. Mary Walsh? No. <laughs> the other way. He did a mean Barbara from. A mean Barbara what? Barbara. <laughs> oh, Greg Malone? This is, yes, that's right. This Greg is Malone. an age, this is an age thing between, between us. Yeah. Barbara Fromm used to be a big national news person in this country. Uh, but yes, Greg Malone did a great Barbara Fromm. And at one point interviewed Barbara Fromm as Barbara Fromm. And one of, the, one of the favorite lines he had in this comedy bit was, because she used to ask people if they were bitter. And, and he would do this bit about saying, are you bitter? And then he he actually interviewed Barbara from and said, "Are you bitter, Barbara?" <laughs> was yeah, quite, he was awesome. It's quite I cheeky. Love, yeah, Tommy Sexton. I mean, come on, classic though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they did, uh, no, they did a, a show uh, before Cogco uh, called the S and M Comic Book, mm. and I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can get. I don't know if you can get it online or whatever, but it is absolutely. Heard of it. I know Wonderful Grand Band, but yeah, I guess like there was a nice gap between Wonderful Grand Band and Codco, so they must have did something during that time. Yeah, they yeah. did a. It, I don't know if Codco kind of jumped off from that, but uh, they did. I don't think they did one or two of these little specials, half hour specials, and it is absolutely golden, man. Uh, the the skits that they had on there, the two of them had. Yeah, oh. Tommy's, Tommy Sexton and Greg Malone together were magic, man. Um, all right, Daryl, you get one too. Uh, and this, uh, this was said, uh, who said it? Whose line is it? I would sooner have a foot in my mouth than a forked tongue. Uh, politician. <laughs> Could yeah, be. A person. <laughs> <laughs> it was a breathing human being from Newfoundland. A man. Um, John Crosby. Correct. Amundo. John Crosby. It is. Well, he pulled that out of his arse, didn't he? Oh man. I don't know, Daryl. When in doubt. Pick John Crosby, right? Yes, I suppose. He said a lot of stuff. And in doubt, Google it. That's your battle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Daryl's at. That's why his background is all blurred, right? Yeah, yeah. There's just two cards in the back. Whatever I, think, I think he's got a 96-inch screen back there. He's got his computer on it. Who, who said this? He's got <laughs> yeah. Siri going. Anyway, Mike, listen, buddy, you've been a great sport. I just did the math and tabulated everything, and it sounds to me like you beat Daryl Handley. Um, so I'm glad for that. <laughs> and uh, we Darryl? really... Well, so I mean, you know, you got you got those bragging rights. So you'll be able to brag all across the country now that you was on this uh, podcast and the boys after the uh, grave. Yeah, and you 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 trounce the fellow on there. Uh, but listen, you you've been a great sport to do this for us, uh, and we're excited for all your success. It's it's really great to see the stuff you're doing and see you across the country doing all well, that. And thank you guys. Thanks for uh, having me in mind to hop on. World famous in Newfoundland is this segment, and uh, we say that because uh, Mike Lynch and all of his characters are world famous in Newfoundland, uh, but he's uh, he's rapidly making them world famous all over. So many thanks to you, and we wish you all the best. Thanks, Boz. You too, man.
Take care, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Mike, Mike, man. Really appreciate it. Perfect, boys. Right on. Well, that was really uh, awesome, Daryl, to have uh, Mike Lynch join us from Calgary, Alberta tonight, where he's on his best kind tour. He's got four dates out there uh, this week and a bunch more next week and up in the Yellowknife. Uh, Great bit of fun. Yeah, Mike's a lot of fun, and uh, he was a good sport, and I really appreciate him coming on. Yes. Thanks, Mike, man. That was great. All right, perfect. So what now? What now? Are you going to go well, let's light, finish her off, hey? light, lightning fast now or what? Yeah, let's, you want to finish it off? Yeah, let's finish it off. In the only way we know how, which is with a lightning round. Well, let's let her rip. So we got some Newfoundland-born NHLers. I got a few questions for you. I think it might be, let me see. We got 12 questions for you coming at you in a lightning fast speed. session. Break, <laughs> breakneck speed. All right, boys, start the timer. Let's uh, let her rip. All right, here we go, Kevin. If you were playing for the Caribous, what Newfoundland Labrador town would you be playing in? Clarenville. Who did Danny Cleary play with during his junior A career? Belleville. He did. Belleville Bulls. Which Newfoundland Labrador community is Ryan Clove from? Shea Heights. For Muse. Was Teddy Purcell ever drafted by an NHL team? Yes. No, he wasn't. He was signed by LA Kings, free agent. Yes, what he was. St. John's neighborhood is home of Harold Druken. Shea Heights. Now you got it. <laughs> How many NHL uh, teams has Adam Party played for? Four. Six. Alex Newell played U.S. collegiate hockey for Boston College. What is that team's nickname? Badgers. They're the Eagles. The Eagles. Ugh. Luke Adams' father once played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Do you know his name? Brian Adams. <laughs> Russ. <laughs> Russ, okay. Jason King of Cornerbrook played for one NHL team. Can you name the team? New York Rangers. Vancouver Canucks. Oh. Daryl Williams was the first player born in this part of Newfoundland and Labrador to make the NHL. Do you know what? Part Labrador is? City. Correct, Labrador. Daniel Lacosta of Labrador City played four games in the NHL. What position did he play? Goalie. He was. Terry Ryan Jr. was drafted in the first round in 1995. What position was he drafted in? 13th. He was 8th. <laughs> Incidentally, the same number of games that he played in the NHL. Okay. Wow. There you go. Pretty good. You did well. Yeah. Man, that went that's fast. That's why it's called the lightning round. That's why it's called the lightning round. I, I think I got a few of those right. Anyway, that's not too bad. You did, you so, did really well on that. So we've learned quite a, bit, quite a bit today about Newfoundlanders in the NHL. We learned quite a bit about Mike Lynch and what he's up to and uh, had a great bit of fun along the way. And, uh, and what was interesting to me was uh, that you uh, had a question about John Slaney for me. And you prepared your questions and I prepared my questions for Mike and you. And I had a question in there about John Slaney's father's barbershop. That's called synergy. Synergy. Yes. And it was very good. So, yep. So that was, uh, that's uh, this episode. We really had a great time. We look forward to our next one coming up. In um, three, we we in might three not weeks. be looking uh, as forward to the NHL season, given that we're Montreal Canadiens fans, but Hey, it's a rough, it's we'll going to be how rough. It goes. I don't mind watching them because they're actually, they're playing hard. The youngsters are playing hard. It's it's exciting to watch, even if they lose. So yeah, but you know what we'll do? We'll 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 spend a little bit more time paying attention to the Newfoundlanders who are currently playing in the NHL. Let's do that. That's yes, yeah, a good idea. It's a good way for us to be uh, very proud Newfoundlanders watching the Newfoundlanders play hockey. So we'll do that. All right. Many thanks to Mike Lynch. Many thanks to the Dildo Brewing Company for your kind sponsorship, and many thanks to you, Daryl, for uh, getting everything together on this episode. Um, we look forward to being back with you all again. In the meantime, there's nothing left to say except go on by. <laughs>